Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Minneapolis Washburn High School as we present our final regular season game of high school girls basketball. Tonight, it's the Twin Cities Championship game featuring the St. Paul Central Minutemen, number seven in class 4A at 22 and four, and Minneapolis Washburn, number 11 in class 2A at 19 and six. Welcome everyone, I'm Mike Beaton. Thank you for joining us in our final regular season game for girls basketball. Won't be involved in the state tournament broadcast, but we have a huge game as the prelude to the playoffs begin. This is the final game for both teams before they begin section play. And so we're gonna talk a lot about section implications and possible state tournament implications as we go on. But this is a big game with a lot of pride on the line, obviously, for both teams. St. Paul Central, they've done it with a balanced attack all year. They went undefeated in the St. Paul City Conference. Their only four losses came against late conference teams. But St. Paul Central usually has a sluggish start, and then they bomb by the end of the year because they don't play summer ball like other teams do. Willie Taylor feels his team is ready to take on some of the big dogs in Class 4A. One reason for that is their twin towers of Shade Chapman and Raina Chereau. Shade Chapman stepping up and scoring like Willie Taylor wanted and can be a dominant force inside, can wreak havoc down there. Six foot two with a seven foot one inch wingspan on top of it. 14 points per game, about eight rebounds a game and three blocks per game. For Minneapolis Washburn, their offense runs through Chase Coley who has put up ridiculous numbers all season. 6'3 body with a 6'7 frame. Leads the state in rebounds and blocks in the top 10 for assists and steals. Averages 21 points per game. Has six triple doubles and one quadruple double. Needless to say, the outcome could be decided down low. Keys to the game for St. Paul Central. It's all about pressure. Establishing it on their end, preventing it from their opponent's end and establishing the inside game, as we mentioned, that's going to be very critical, especially with Chase Coley, so potent with rebounds. You've got Chapman and Chereau who can scoop up boards and get some putbacks for you, but they have yet to face a player of Chase Coley's caliber. For Minneapolis Washburn, they want to keep Central off the boards for obvious reasons, because Central has more of a post tandem than Washburn does, and they'll want to avoid silly turnovers against Central's full court pressure defense central a quick paced team as is Washburn so expect a lot of possessions both ways starting lineups are coming up in a moment you're watching high school basketball the Twin Cities championship welcome back to Minneapolis Washburn let's take a look at the starting five for the visiting St. Paul Central Minutemen it's number one Tamara Curtis the 5'7 senior guard cleared to play after transferring from Highland, that was settled with the high school league, so she'll be in uniform tonight. Betsy McDonald, number five, five seven senior guard. Number 11, Shade Chapman, 6'3", senior center. Number 12, Jada Jones, 5'6", junior guard. And number 15, Raina Chereau, 6'2", junior center. Minneapolis Washburn will start Audrey Devon, number one, the 5'9", senior guard. Elizabeth Peterson, number four, the 5'9", senior forward. Number 23, Chase Coley, the 6'3", junior forward. Number 24, Megan Lucas, 5'11", senior forward. And number 45, Natalie Holdall, 5'10", junior forward. As you saw in the open, the key matchup very well could be Shade Chapman and Chase Coley. Should be a fun battle between those two. Although I spoke with head coach Tyler Coley before the game, he said he may keep Chase Coley away from the paint because the key for this game, obviously you want to win and get some pride for your city, but you don't want to get banged up right before playoffs begin because it's a single elimination format. One loss and you're out. St. Paul Central, a regular visitor to the Twin Cities Championship game, missed the ticket last year because they tied with Highland Park and the tiebreaker rule go to the team who has the longest drought. Minneapolis Washburn making their first appearance in this game in 28 years. You have to go back to 1985 to find their last appearance. And perhaps we'll do a time capsule of what life was like back then, but there certainly was not a lot of the electronic devices that we have now. 
Both teams finished undefeated in the conference. Neither got much of a challenge on that note. Minneapolis Washburn had a brief one with Minneapolis Roosevelt, but even had they lost that one, they had more than enough of a cushion to host this prestigious event. St. Paul Central had a couple of challenges from Como Park, but the Cougars not quite up to the level of talent that St. Paul Central boasts. Beyond that, not much competition below the conference, so. It may have been widely expected, but a highly anticipated game between two opponents who don't see much of each other. This will be Minneapolis Washburn's second game against a St. Paul City Conference foe. They defeated Humboldt in a sectional game, clobbered them to be precise. There are some common opponents between the two teams. Both teams have defeated Roosevelt. Woodbury is another one. Minneapolis Washburn lost to Woodbury. To start the season, St. Paul Central beat them by three in a sectional game. St. Paul Central with the first possession. They're wearing the white jerseys. Betsy McDonald pulls up, and she's blocked, but Rainer Chereau tried to save it, picked up by Chase Coley. And here come the Washburn Millers. Both teams have a legitimate chance of making the state tournament, but both would be underdogs in terms of what the papers say if they get there. Favorite to win in 2A is Providence Academy. And there you hear the sound of Chase Foley getting the and one. That will send her to the line. Chase Coley, as we said, absolutely ridiculous on the season. Offensively, 21.1 points per game, 48% field goal accuracy. Free throw shooting, though, just under 60%. But she's pure there. For Minneapolis Washburn, they would likely have to get past Providence Academy, but before that, in sections, they may face either Humboldt or Minnehaha Academy. That's what the speculators have. For St. Paul Central, they are the number one seed in their section, but if they get to the 4A championship tournament, Hopkins, Eastview, Kennedy, and even Roseville would all be front runners. St. Paul Central will have to go as an underdog. Here's Betsy McDonald handling the ball. She'll fire from three-point range, short. And the rebound going to Elizabeth Peterson. This is Audrey Devon. Devon out to hold all, back to Devon. Here's Chase Coley, turn around, and more free throws coming. Chase Coley, as we mentioned in the open, six triple doubles, one quadruple double, and that took place against Minneapolis North in the second meeting between those two. 16 points, 18 rebounds, 10 assists, 11 blocks. These numbers are just unreal. Coley averaging an unbelievable 17 and a half rebounds a game, 8.9 blocks per game, gets five and a half assists a game, and 5.3 steals a game. She splits on that trip. She has scored all four points in this game thus far. Jump ball, possession arrow favors Washburn. Interestingly enough, in all of St. Paul Central's recent visits to the Twin Cities game, they have lost their last three visits. They were all the Minneapolis South. And this is a game Willie Taylor said he didn't want to lose. Raina Chereau gets a steal because of the potential state tournament seating implications. Again, Central in the middle of the pack. Today, Chapman with a kiss off the glass in the paint. That gets her on the board. And for Minneapolis Washburn too, they see one through five in the classes. Here's Audrey Devon on the drive, rejected by the five foot five Betsy McDonald. She finds today Chapman on the fast break, no basket, but free throws coming for the University of Alabama Birmingham recruit. Today Chapman, we mentioned 97 inch wingspan. That is longer than Delisha Milton-Jones of the Los Angeles Sparks. She has a seven foot even wingspan, 96 inches. Chapman on the season, we said 14 points per game, 7.6 rebounds a game, 2.9 blocks. 68% free throw shooter, 45% field goal shooter. Splits here. It is 4-2 in favor of the Millers. 
So we talked about the state tournament implications. If St. Paul Central wins this game against a high quality 2A foe, here's Holdall from the corner, bullseye. If St. Paul Central wins, that would give them some leveraging chips when it came to state tournament seating should they get past their section because once they get past the top four, it's a pretty muddy field among the remaining four, but getting a seed is important because that you would have control over your matchups. Minneapolis Washburn certainly would like that as well. If they can beat a top 10 team, that may favor them should they get to state. But again, they're gonna have to get through a tough section. Humble the sleeper, Minnehaha Academy would appear to be their biggest obstacle. Traveling violation on Jada Jones. 15-11 remaining in the first half. Here is Audrey Devon, coast to coast, loses control. McDonald with the rebound. McDonald going to St. Cloud State University. Jada Haynes in the game, number 14 for the Minutemen. Chapman, that was from three point range, no good. Jada Jones is there, foul, count it. Jones using the reverse to go forward. The foul is on Devon. One rip. Jada Jones on the season, six points per game, 52% free throw shooter. Clanks it. Dead ball rebound to St. Paul Central. McDonald on the release. Short from three point range, rebound Coley. Peterson traveled and she knew it. But Tyler Coley cheering them on anyway. He has a very positive but very disciplined regimen here at Minneapolis Washburn. And that has transformed a team that had not been a factor in the Minneapolis City Conference in the era of South. Mere contender. McDonald over to Lyric Williams making her first appearance for the Minutemen. Warrior number three fires the runner. Swish. Seven all. Peterson on the fast break. Too strong. Megan Lucas is there for the cleanup. Here's Coley. Draws a foul off the double team. Foul is charged to Jada Jones, her first. Devon. Baseline drive. St. Paul Central is ready for it. Lyric Williams pump fakes. Here's Jada Jones. She tries a pump fake. Washburn not buying it, though. McDonald rejected, and a steal by Coley. Coley with the little breakaway speed. Lyric Williams. Chelsea Kizzer going in the game for the Minutemen, number two in the game for Washburn, number 15, Isabel Strebala. You're going to see a few players we, you didn't see in the game against Humboldt we called earlier this season, and that's because Holdall for three. Rims out. Rebound going to Chereau. You're going to see a few more players because Washburn promoted some of their JV players to the varsity roster. Haynes for three. Too strong. Kizart is there. No cleanup or free throws coming. Kizart still balancing time between JV and varsity. Averaging 6.8 points per game, 51% field goal shooter. So very accurate for a sophomore. Not as accurate from free throw line though, 
We're tied at seven. Foul was charged to Devon, her first personal, by the way. Kizzard splits. St. Paul Central with the first lead. Ball bounces off of Coley's foot, but it didn't go across the half court line. Chelsea Kizzard raced in there to get it off Coley's leg. Turnover, and St. Paul Central will pick up the ball. Here's Tamara Curtis to inbound. She played at Highland Park was expected to help anchor that team, but then departed for St. Paul Central. And from a talent perspective, I don't blame Ken at the three-pointer. Chase Coley on the run again. Doesn't see an opening, will back off. Waits until everyone crosses the half-court line, so no backcourt violation. And that's the thing with Coley. She's a smart player, although a turnover here by Megan Lucas to Betsy McDonald. McDonald with a no-look pass. Tamara Curtis wasn't ready for it. Picked up by Devon. It's a sprint. Devon will draw the foul. It will be charged to Kizzard. Devon, the second option on Minneapolis Washburn's team from an offensive perspective. 40% three-point shooter. Not the most accurate, but she does average 9.3 points per game and a decent free throw shooter, 65%. Beyond the offense, she'll give you three assists per game and 3.6 steals a game as well. been a common theme from the free throw line tonight. Again, this is a rare nighttime version of the Twin Cities Championship. Curtis can't hit the runner, but the offensive rebound goes to Chereau. She can't get the cleanup. Should aid Chapman? No. Ball's still live. It goes off Chereau, and it will go to Washburn. Chereau has not been able to replicate her magnificent performance against Chanhass in one of the first games we had for you this season when she scored a career-high 27 points and St. Paul Central needed every one of them to beat the Chanhassen Storm in overtime. One of many signature wins for the group. They also beat Lakeville North, the top 10 foes. We said the only losses to the year this season were to late conference opponents. Everybody else, W's, and that includes wins over New Prague, one of the top teams in 3A, and St. Anthony Village. St. Paul Central has won their last 13 games. Minneapolis Washburn has won their last 11. Lucas hits it from the elbow. Jada Jones going to Curtis. Over to Lyric Williams. Left wing three. Off the mark. Rebound. Hold all. Here is Devon. Untrouble finds Lucas. Hold all has it now. Coley on the baseline drive. And she's fouled by Raina Shiro. Coley, not a volume shooter. She has the talent to certainly rack up numbers, but she would rather take shots she is comfortable with, prefers some smart shot selection over volume shooting. And she's aware of the attention she draws, so she has spent a lot of time, almost to a fault, spreading the ball out to her teammates. Against Southwest, she scored eight points in a row. Southwest drawed in on her. Recognizing this, she went to her teammates and picked up 12 assists to finish out a convincing victory over their Minneapolis Conference foe. Here's LaShondra Curtis in the game, but her layup is off. St. Paul Central substituting very early. Audrey Devon beats Curtis, out it! <laughs> we 
Willie Taylor can't be happy about that. He said he's looking for more consistency out of her postseason play. Devon planning to go to Loyola in Chicago, a member of the Horizon League. Not sure if she'll play. Tyler Coley is convincing or attempting to convince her that she could make the team as a walk-on, and she has some capabilities. Chapman over to Williams. Chapman, mid-range, air balls it. Right idea by Isabel Strabella. She got the rebound, but she was also out of bounds. So court spacing very key, especially down low. And not all players get, are aware of it at this level. Curtis, no. Chapman has the rebound to spell from her fingertips. 10.57 left. Again, the rare nighttime game between the two. There was a game between De La Salle and Washburn earlier today. Devon for three. Off target. So because the boys game was already scheduled and the Twin Cities game is not a given until the end of the season, the boys game was pushed to the daytime and the girls had to wait until night. So a rare Saturday night game. McDonald left alone. Clint goes at home. That's her first field goal. 13-11 is our score. Deflected off central, it will stay with Washburn. Hold all. Drawing coverage, blocked, but Chapman committed the foul, made contact. Cold all this season, averaging 5.7 points per game, 72% free throw shooter, and decent in from the floor as well, 41% field goal percentage. makes both. Brings her up to five. It's 15-11. It's 15-11, but the clock is stopped. There we go. Jones losing it to Coley. And here's Holdall to pick it up. Here's Chase on the run. Too long. Rebound, Chereau. Jones finds Curtis down low, and a nice dish to Chereau, who will get free throws. Rena Chereau, the aspiring snowboarder. We profiled that a couple of times this season. Played volleyball, looking to start track and field play this year. But has yet to register on the score column on the season, relatively quiet. Eight points per game, and subpar shooting numbers from the free throw line and from the floor, but she splits to get on the board. 15-12 in favor of Washburn. Scramble, picked up by Chereau. Williams pulls up, that's Gizzard I should say, but she can't hit from three point range. LaShondra Curtis gets the offensive rebound, was looking for Chereau in the middle, and Devon will be hit with a foul. That will be her second. Washburn had three to give. Central is in the penalty now. Washburn had two to give, I should say. McDonald. 
pulls up from the elbow. Oh, can't get the roll, but free throw's coming, and I believe the foul is charged to Devon. Yes, that's gonna be her third, and Tyler Coley has a choice to make with this starting point guard. Here's McDonald. As we mentioned, going to St. Cloud State. 11.4 points per game, 75% free throw shooter, 48% field goal accuracy. Also plays in the band, so when St. Paul Central graduates this year at Roy Wilkins Auditorium, McDonald will be part of the coronation procedures. She makes both free throws at the one point margin. Devon does indeed go out. We may not see her until the second half. Lucas bounce passes to Stravala. Holdall thought about it. Coley launching a three off the heel, picked up by McDonald. McDonald, a little shovel pass to Chiro. Long range two, no good. High recoil, goes right to Chiro. Kizzer thought about it. The pass to Chiro was read perfectly by Stravala. She picks it off cleanly. Here is number 32, that is Aaron Bolden for the Minneapolis Washburn Millers. We did mention Washburn would send a lot of players you may not recognize from the previous broadcast. Coley faking a shot, Bolden for three. No, long range shooting elusive for both squads. Stop, pop, no good from McDonald. Rebound, Haynes. Can't get the bounce. Kind of a sluggish game. Haynes, that doesn't fall. Coley picks up the rebound. At least the rebounds are racking up for both squads. Bolden almost losing control. Strabala. No good. Haynes tumbles over. Curtis is there for the cleanup. Minneapolis Washburn played last night against Southwest. So a back-to-back -back for them. St. Paul Central finished up their conference slate on Thursday. And Tamara Curtis travels. She played on the junior varsity team while they sorted out the eligibility issue. But you can tell the lack of varsity minutes may have affected her there, but. Both teams are so effective at shutting down the paint, you're seeing a lot of perimeter shooting. Like from there from Shabala, but she hits it from the baseline this time. And she finally gets on the board. 17-14. McDonald to Williams. Curtis again. LaShondra Curtis, and she travels. Noah charges call. Team control foul, so no free throws awarded. Her second personal for LaShondra Curtis. Coley to Holdall, and she let it go. Six fifty left in the opening half. Coley losing control, and it's stripped by Curtis. McDonald on the fast break. No. Ball still live. Lucas rips it away and rips it out of her hands. And Strabala takes a tumble, tripping over one of her own players on the bench. She's fine, but uh, slid for a few feet. Williams to McDonald. Tamara Curtis. Bullseye! We're tied at 17. Bolden again. 
Tyler Coley calls timeout with six minutes and 10 seconds remaining. So while we're at this timeout, let's take a look at some of these capsules one more time. This will be the last time we get to uh, examine these for you because, uh, because we're done with girls basketball after this. And that includes St. Paul Central. We talked about Betsy McDonald and her band pursuits. Some other things to mention. Well, there we are. McDonald calls herself Betsy or Bet, says you've seen, going to St. Cloud State. Likes to play basketball because uh, the people she meets along the way and her family and coaches have always been supportive. Also a soccer player and plays in the band as you saw. Here's Megan Lucas and she travels, 6'10 remaining. We'll try to get a few more profiles for you before we are through. Here's Betsy McDonald. Bouncing over to Curtis. One-on-one -on -one situation, Washburn in the penalty. That will send LaShondra Curtis down or to the free throw line. The best low block offensive player in the words of Willie Taylor. Curtis averaging 7.2 points per game. Bricks it, empty possession. McCauley loses control. McDonald can't hit the baseline, Jay. Jada Jones with the offensive rebound. Now she'll try from three-point range. Still not finding her form. And an over-the-back foul on Natalie Holdall. So that will send LaShondra Curtis back to the free throw line. Curtis on the board. Rebounding wise, gets about five a game. Free throws though, suspect for both teams and that could hurt them in state tournament play. Ball will stay with Washburn as it heads up the staircase. Again, this is a game both teams want to win, both for pride and for seeding implications. Hold all on the inbound play. Interesting thing about St. Paul Central. Nobody leads the conference in scoring for either team, actually. Jada Jones was looking for the foul and may have been a little too fancy there. Chase Coley is third in the conference, and Shade Chapman is third in the St. Paul City Conference, but neither of these teams has a leader in that category. And you're seeing some of the inexperience in Washburn, especially with the younger players coming into effect. The Dallas, Rally, the Dallas Riley travels, and a lot of traveling violations on Washburn's end. They're gonna have to clean that up. Fortunately, they get a bye to start their section play. There are 14 teams in that section, so the first two Seeds, Southwest, or Washburn and Minnehaha will get a breather. Jada Jones, pump fakes, double dribble violation. Four minutes, 37 seconds left in the first half. Washburn turns it over. Yeah. 
Jones. Can't hit the drive. Raina Chereau has it. Kicks out to Curtis. Jada Haynes for three. Off the mark. Chereau lost it to Strabala. But she's double teamed in the baseline. And Chereau picks it up. But she's still not hitting. McDonald had to just throw it up there. Couldn't answer the prayer. And the ball still. Everyone falling down. Everybody fighting for the loose ball there. And Washburn throws it right into the hands of Chereau. Jada Haynes is one on one. Beats the outstretched Coley. Can't hit from three, though. Jada Jones, reverse. No. One of the uh, slockly, sloppiest, slugliest, there we go. Sloppy, ugly, merged together. Halves I've seen in the Twin Cities Championship, but you get that sometimes in this situation. Everyone gets a little nervous, a little edgy. And Chase Coley draws a foul in the midst of that melee. So she'll go to the free throw line. Chase Coley just one field goal. But again, she does not want to shoulder the load herself. She wants everyone else to get involved, and that's going to be a huge benefit when college coaches come looking at her. She already has several offers, including Iowa, Minnesota, Toledo, Akron, Loyola, and Wisconsin, Milwaukee. 20 to 19 is our score. Rena Chiro, and she travels. Not the most convincing half for state tournament possibilities here, but both teams are very scrappy. Tamara Curtis. Draws the foul on Strabala, and she will go to the line. Tamara Curtis, this is her eighth game this season, has not been active. Not been active too much because she's usually playing reserve minutes, but again, missed most of the season as they worked out her eligibility requirements with the Minnesota State High School League. As you know, if you transfer and change districts, you have to sit out a year unless you're an eighth grader or you know, any time before ninth grade, I should say. Here's Raina Chereau getting the cleanup off Curtis's brick. And that's the Raina Chereau we're used to seeing. St. Paul Central with a two-point lead. Wasburn trying to press, can't do it. Kizer with the steal. McDonald going off to Kizzard. And you can see some of the hesitation with Central. Of course, they're not going to rush shots, but when so many players have been bricking, it can play into your sight. Curtis used up the dribble, finds Kizzard. Bounce pass to Chereau, and Chereau had the opening. And she and Coley take a fall. Holdall trying to get it past Jones, but she doesn't have those skills. Jada Jones bails her out with a foul, though. It's double bonus time for Minneapolis Washburn. Washburn played 10 games this season against Class 4 opponents. This will be their 11th such game. They finished 4 and 6. All six losses came against 4A foes. They prepare for this run and try to do some things they haven't done before. And Tyler Coley said his players are willing to sacrifice playing time for the big picture. Hold all the leading score with eight points. A little surprising, but we'll get that. St. Paul Central turns it over as the Spectators are not allowed to participate. Maddie Downing in the game for Washburn, wearing number 40, making her first appearance.
Lucas inbound, having trouble finding a target. You see Washburn having some struggles without Audrey Devon available. St. Paul Central gets the deflection. You don't have that leadership. And St. Paul Central has several guards getting deeper when Tamara Curtis was cleared to play. They may not have the flashiest guards compared to their state tournament days of Angel Robinson and Keonda Johnson, but they're formidable. And don't forget the Eric Taylor, who's having a phenomenal career at Iowa after three ACL injuries. Kizart, high arcing three off the mark. Tamara Curtis with the offensive rebound, and Kizart will score the old fashioned way in the paint where a lot of players used to camp in the days before a three-point line. Kizar with the first field goal. Peterson to Lucas. Finds Coley, off balance. Coley with a fadeaway, short. Coley a little out of position there. McDonald picks it up after the scramble. Lyric Williams pump makes the three. And she travels again. I have not seen this many traveling violations in the later stages of the season. Usually both teams have that element cleaned up, but again, when you are playing in the last game of the regular season, you know this is it. After this, it's single elimination time. You may do a few things you're not accustomed to. You may try to reach a little bit. That is sticking to your game. Hold all. That turnaround Jay is not going in for anybody. Chase Coley in trouble, throws it up, tried to draw the foul. The refs wouldn't buy it. One minute in the first half. Back in the Central South rivalry peak, this event used to sell out. Not quite those crowds now, but this is a major event back in those days. Lyric Williams off the heel again. What do you do when nothing seems to be working for you? I'm not sure. 40 seconds on the clock. Chereau with the steal. Lyric Williams on the fast break. There's one way to score. St. Paul Central has slowly taken advantage again. Minneapolis Washburn without the services of Andre Devon, who's sitting with three fouls. And you see how thin they are at point guard. Hold all for three, but that's going to be well short. Peterson, or that, yeah, Peterson was there for the save. Coley can hit the baseline, Jay, and time will expire. But St. Paul Central. It wasn't pretty, but they worked their way up to a 26-21 advantage, but by far the sloppiest first half I've seen in the last day of the regular season. But I'm sure both teams will clean it up. And again, you get your nerves going a little bit when you have this kind of environment, this kind of atmosphere, getting a bonus game that you maybe weren't preparing for. Both teams will go over these things and more. We'll take a breather and return with our first half analysis and a few more notes for you. This is the Twin Cities Girls Championship right here on TSB Television. Welcome back to Washburn High School as we continue our coverage of the Twin Cities Girls Championship, our final regular season game of girls basketball. St. Paul Central leads Minneapolis Washburn 26-21 in one of the most unusual first halves I have seen all season. Leading all scores as we go over the numbers, Natalie Holdall has eight points, Chase Coley has five, Audrey Devon has four. Those are your notables. 
For Central, leading scorer just has five points. That's Betsy McDonald. Tamara Curtis and Lyric Williams have four points. And then Shade Chapman, Raina Shiro, and Chelsea Kizzard have three, but very unusual situation considering it this late in the season. We were seeing play that I thought you might see in November, and if they can't find a way to clean that up, this could be a very difficult campaign. Well, let's take a quick look at Tamara Curtis, who transferred from Highland Park, also takes part in track. She prays before every game, and she enjoys basketball because it helps her stay focused in school. Again, transfers from Highland to Central this year. We want to get these athletes profiled. This will be the last time we have that opportunity. St. Paul Central wearing the white jerseys. Washburn wearing the blue. Both teams looking to preserve their winning streak. St. Paul Central has won the last 13 games. Washburn has won the last 11. Bright on the line and potential state tournament seeding implications. Chapman from the elbow. That's no good. Tamara Curtis racing in for the offensive rebound, showing that track speed. Chiro gets the roll. She'll send a thank you card to the rim after that one. That's one way to get around a double team. Audrey Devon, one reason why Washburn struggled, she had to sit with three fouls. Chase Coley from the paint will go to the line. The foul will be charged to Chiro. Despite all the schools that are looking at Chase Coley, the the college she wants to attend is DePaul University. Hoping uh, to be a part of that staff. Jessica January of Richfield will be heading there next season. So she would have a great point guard to go along with this wing. Short there. Miss both though, and if that's one thing Coley needs to work on before her senior campaign. It's free throws. Chapman, in and out. Rims have not been friendly tonight. Traveling violation on Washburn. Megan Lucas couldn't control herself after the rebound. And a turnover. St. Paul Central will inbound under their own basket. McDonald, quick release. I've run out of adjectives to describe just how difficult it has been for both these teams. I've covered many games, especially with Central, and I haven't seen this kind of difficulty level. Megan Lucas getting the bounce. We're not seeing a lot of clean shots, even though shots going in need a bounce or two. Curtis was a little too wild on the drive. Dead ball rebound to Minneapolis Washburn. And making her first appearance, Lucia Renikoff. She had to step in earlier in the season while other players were going through some injury trouble. But said, in the words of Tyler Coley, he said, Renikoff has allowed Washburn to take some pressure off Devon at the guard slot. Described as a Chris Paul type of player. Let's see if she can give them a spark. Lucas hauls in the pass. Drive is no good. Chapman beats her coverage, and that's going to go to Devon. That's going to be her fourth personal foul, and Devon may not get much more playing time after that. Devon already going to the bench. It may be a benefit that both schools will get a breather. Figuratively speaking, Chapman makes her first. St. Paul Central has to play on Wednesday in the first round of their section, but they get North St. Paul, a team they throttled earlier this season and they not expected to compete that much. We'll talk a little more about section assignments later on. Uh, Chapman made both free throws. Chase Coley used up the dribble, and she draws the foul. <laughs> the 
foul is charged to J.J. Jones at their third, and so Central may have to go to their bench soon. That's a very loud rim. Chase Coley held to one field goal. This isn't the first time she's struggled, though. She's had a few games where she had an overall rough night. Chapman, her drive is deflected. And the ball was last touched by Washburn in the eyes of the official. Kizard inbounding. McDonald kicks out to Lyric Williams, pump fakes the three. Chapman lines it up. Short, McDonald with the rebound. She'll try again. Gets the bounce. I thought that was going out too. Everything else seems to be. St. Paul Central up 32-24 with over 15 minutes to play in the second. Renikoff finding Coley. Coley's underhand layup, no good. Holy cow! By far the most athletic move we have seen all game. Coley gets her second field goal. And gets a little highlight to her collection. Benson McDonald fakes the drive. Chapman is fouled. I believe it will be charged to Elizabeth Peterson. Yes, it will be charged to Peterson. That's her third personal. We mentioned today Chapman going to Alabama Birmingham and not the best of free throw shooters as we have seen. Although a lot of post players don't shoot that well. Chapman is among the better ones though at 68%, but as we mentioned in the open, Stepping up as a scoring leader this season, Willie Taylor wanted a little more of that from her because she was particularly aggressive on the defensive side, not so much on the offensive side. Splits there. And 14 points per game on a team that was balanced by accident. Willie Taylor doesn't have any specific plan as far as how he wants his team to perform, but he'll take the win any time. Here's McDonald breaking through the press and fakes herself out. Chapman is there to clean up the mess. And now we're seeing some of the smoother plays on both sides. St. Paul Central with their largest advantage thus far. Here's Jazanae Patterson, no. Jazanae Patterson promoted to the varsity level in the last few games. Chase Coley draws the foul again. No, an offensive foul was called. This will give Central a chance to pad their lead. Curtis, that was short. Dead ball rebound to Washburn. Washburn has not played in this game since 1985. For context, I was not born yet. Chapman picks up the steal. That was a backcourt violation and the back official was there. That was the right call. Chapman trying to evade the double team, kicked out to McDonald, but McDonald had not crossed the half court line in time. Good job by the trailing official to spot that. And so a fast break chance nullified for Central. Coley, long two. No, Chapman with the rebound. Chapman, 
almost mishandled the bounce pass. Right idea, but these rims have just not been very friendly. Washburn with the possession arrow. Unforgiving. And I think both, I think Central's glad they don't have to play the first round here. Washburn will play their first sectional game here. Central will also host, but after that, every game will be held at neutral site courts. Washburn will get free throws. Coley nearly blocked, but drove, uh, got the foul. Today, Chapman not pleased with it. She thought she had a clean block. That's her third personal foul, but Coley has not been an automatic free throw shooter tonight. She's getting a lot of trips though, and if you're gonna beat Washburn, you have to find a way to contain Coley, who is getting some productivity. field goals, everything else has come from the charity stripe, but she works her way up to 10, so that will keep her double-double streak active. She has recorded at least a double-double in every game since a loss to Edina earlier this season. Nearly a traveling violation. Doesn't matter, Renikoff with the steal. We'll get number 30 for you on Central in a moment. She finds Dajane Patterson, and Patterson had some space for a layup, pulled up instead. But those rims continue to reject most shots. Number 30 for St. Paul Central is Asiya Smith, whose play has been limited by injury this season. Curtis on the runner, yes! It is indeed possible. Chase Coley sees an opening on the baseline. Can't get the bounce. Very tough to do against a double team, and Holdall will be called for the reach-in. And hold all that may be her third or fourth. Now that's her second, so overestimated there, but Jason A. Patterson will step out. 11.53 left. By the way, Shade Chapman coming into this game needed 14 points to cross 1,000 for her career. If she can't get it here, she would likely get it in her first sectional game on Wednesday against North St. Paul. Asiya Smith saves it, prevents the backcourt violation, impressive athleticism on her part. Passing not quite as crisp as we've seen, but they make it work, but Chereau Chereau has not found much after that Chan Hassan game in terms of being a threat. Chase Coley draws the foul, it's on Chereau. Not a shooting foul, but. That's Chereau's third. I'm saying I've seen more smooth games from both teams. So if you're gonna have a mulligan, get it out of here now. And a foul on St. Paul Central. Get it out of the way now before it becomes an issue in section play. St. Paul Central will call timeout. The foul is Lashondra Curtis's third, 11-16 remaining. Let's continue with our look at St. Paul Central's capsules. including Jada Jones. Says she has a lazy eye, didn't say which. Enjoys playing basketball because she can develop a relationship with players that you may end up playing against in college, which is a frequent scenario in any division. Also plays track. A lot of the central basketball players take part in the track team, in part because the head coach is standing on the floor, Willie Taylor. There's your look at Jada Jones. 
We'll try to get a few more in for you before we wrap things up here. Coley, that was short. And wrestling the rebound away is Jada Jones. The foul will be charged to Megan Lucas. A very aggressive game, but... Ball control. I'm sure there will be a few drills on both sides when this one's over. Chereau again. Washburn on the fast break, but McDonald was there and stops them. Jada Jones drains the baseline J. And with Chereau's... Chereau's woes, you wonder why does she keep shooting? They say the worst thing a shooter can do is stop making attempts, no matter how much they're struggling. Hold on. Much needed tray for Washburn. Craigs are up to 11. It's an eight point margin. Jada Jones almost lost the handle. Finds McDonald. Curtis. Yes, with the turnaround, Jay. I wasn't sure if, if that shot was going to work all night. Chase Coley sees room, but St. Paul Central shutting her down. They know she's coming, and so they'll converge on her position. The same tactic a lot of playoff teams used against Lindsey Whalen last year in the WNBA playoffs. Betsy McDonald drains the runner. St. Paul Central finding some offense now. Coley again. No. Holdall has the touch. And if I'm Washburn, I may consider redirecting my offense to go through Holdall right now. She's finding most of the open shots here with just over nine minutes to play. McDonald for three. That would have been huge. Lucas controls the rebound. Coley finds Peterson, one on one, and she draws the foul on Curtis. St. Paul Central had one to give. But they're going to call it a shooting foul. That sends Elizabeth Peterson to the line. Averaging four and a half points per game this season, 63% free throw shooter. We talked about ball handling. Ironically, that is one of the drills Tyler Coley has his Washburn team practice before every session. It's a very routine regimen. They spend two hours in the study hall in the alumni room before each practice. And as we mentioned, the first drill in practice is ball handling, making sure you can control the rock. Peterson makes both free throws. It's an eight point margin and that stops the clock with 8.52 and that's something we'll have to keep an eye on. But by golly, we're at least seeing some offense. Jada Jones over to McDonald. Now over to Lyric Williams. Haynes to Jones. Central will not force anything now. Jada Jones, long three. No, but a high recoil, too much for the 6-3 frame of Coley. And Central can kill more time off the clock here. Chapman draws the foul on number 42 for Washburn. Kendra Zellner-Smith. Foul is charged to Zellner Smith, as we mentioned, that's her first. Washburn had two to give. McDonald. 
out to Jones. Central will do this probably for the last eight minutes if they want. They're gonna make Washburn come out and force them to make a decision. They leave the lane alone, but Jada Jones released too early. She had a wide open lane, didn't take advantage of it. Big chance here. No foul called, even though Coley was bumped. Big break for Central, because they are in the penalty. Tyler Coley calls timeout with seven minutes and 40 seconds left in the second half. Game is not over, but... With how difficult the scoring has been, it's hard to say what's going to happen for both schools. Let's take a look at Minneapolis Washburn and dive in to Chase Coley a little bit. We talked about her before, likes to get her hair done by everyone. Also plays volleyball and lacrosse. Likes to play with and against her friends. As we said, not sure where she wants to go to school, but she has plenty of options at the Division I level, but she may want to put this game behind after its conclusion. And let's take a quick look at the sections with St. Paul Central. We said North St. Paul's a matchup. If they win, and they should, they would play either Tartan and Creighton Durham Hall. Both schools also struggling. Tartan are one player team, really, with Tia Elbert, but they don't have much support. Creighton Durham Hall, sub 500 team. Woodbury could give them some trouble. White Bear Lake having a down year, but St. Paul Central has the most favorable path to state they've had in some time. They get the steal here. Curtis, oh, oh, they bail, were bailed out big time. LaShondra Curtis couldn't get the pass on target. Here is Chapman, over. McDonald open for three off the screen, bullseye! 12 for McDonald. St. Paul Central making a stand now. Renikoff in trouble. Finds Jasmine Patterson. Patterson on the drive and she'll go to the line. Jasmine Patterson, the daughter of a Minneapolis Washburn alum. Mother passed away a few years ago, but Jasmine inherited her work ethic. Paid her dues and took the reins to run the JV team. Her speed and instinct have proven valuable in the minutes she has logged in varsity play. And she gets on the board here. Patterson makes both. 7.08 left, Washburn's gonna need a few stops and without a shot clock. It may be difficult. Chapman finds Chereau again. And Chereau finally gets a basket to fall. Not a great night for her overall in field goal shooting, but she'll take it. Hitting the floater. Patterson almost lost the ball. Coley not on the floor right now, taking probably her last break. Patterson can't get the bounce. Dead ball rebound to St. Paul Central. We didn't get a chance to look at the seedings over in section 4-2A before we came over here, but it could be Washburn and Minnehaha taking the title, and I've seen both teams in action, and I've seen the good, I've seen the bad, and I've seen the ugly. It's hard to pick a winner. If you, Minnehaha certainly has the experience. They've qualified for state the last five years, but this could be the most vulnerable year. Holdall commits a foul. That was Washburn's last to give. Here comes Chase Coley one more time. McDonald from the corner. 
That would have been a huge dagger, but Reina Chereau was there for the offensive rebound. Oh, they couldn't settle down in time, and Jada Jones drains the mid-range J. St. Paul Central's lead up to 13. And it looks like another win is theirs, but when you look at the scheduling, again, the resume of both schools, there's Chapman with a clean block on Renikoff. St. Paul Central has had far more quality wins. We talked about they beat Chanhassen, they beat Lakeville North, they came close. They were within a possession of beating Eden Prairie, but a poorly executed final drive cost them. Coley will go to the line. It's a one-on-one -one situation. They beat New Prague to start the year. Coley missing again. You also wonder if Washburn's back-to-back -back may have worn them out. St. Paul Central had an extra day of rest. That can always be an issue of sorts. Here's Holdall on the drive. That doesn't fall. And don't forget, Devon has missed a lot of time because of foul trouble. But Josh Thoreau is actually here to watch this game. The Minnehaha coach doing some scouting. And I'm sure he'll take a lot of notes at how Central attacked this team. Washburn is confident they could take on Minnehaha and win. But they cannot have a night like this. The foul was charged to Peterson. That's your fourth. And today Chapman has a chance to pad her numbers. Devon's going back in. She has four. It would be easy to say Minnehaha has their ticket after watching a game like this, but again, Minnehaha has also struggled against some of the top teams. Audrey Devon draws the foul. Devon held the four points and not much playing time overall because of her foul trouble. I want to remind you, we're at this point. Next week, it's boys basketball, the Twin Cities Boys Championship, and that will wrap up our basketball season. We're not doing state this year, but I don't mind that too much. And Washburn missing too many free throws here when it counts. Five minutes to go, and St. Paul Central getting closer to cementing a victory here. Overall, I thought this game would be a little sharper than what we had last year between Roosevelt and Highland Park. Betsy McDonald. <laughs> There's a way to get it past Chase Coley, sidearming. McDonald up to 14. And that just sums up Washburn's night. Patterson coming in on this inbound. I do want to mention Washburn, they may not win this one, but they do have three All-State nominees. Today, Chapman took a hard hit, but gets up a little slow that time. It hasn't been pretty, but St. Paul Central converting on their free throw attempts. Washburn unable to, and that's going to be the difference of this game, most likely. St. Paul Central, the senior heavy team, as is Washburn, so Washburn looking forward to what they have for Central. This may be their best chance to go back and win another state title beyond this year. 
I'm not sure what to expect, but you do have a strong coaching pedigree in Willie Taylor, the winningest head coach in the St. Paul City Conference. We'll stay with Washburn. Washburn. It's been a slow but steady building process. We've got a timeout, and that's going to allow me to continue with these profiles. We have one more. We talked a little bit about Raina Chereau. Let's dive into it a little more. We mentioned she has taken part in volleyball and track. Basketball, her one constant throughout her athletic career. The aspiring snowboarder, as we talked about. Likes to play ball because it gives her something to stay focused on instead of trying to fit in. It gives you something to look forward to. That's Chereau's view of the sport. And for Washburn, we talked about their three All-State nominees. They are Audrey Devon, Megan Lucas, and Maddie Downing, all three sport athletes. And in Tyler Coley's words, as they transition to being a contender more frequently, you start thinking less about the wins and the points and more about being a student first because colleges want to make sure they have sound players on their roster. Audrey Devon, no. St. Paul Central, this just might do it for them. Four minutes away from victory. Coley with the deflection, but couldn't get around Chereau, and she posts up by Coley. Coley getting posterized a little bit by Central's Twin Towers. Devon finding Coley, works away inside. Charge. Nothing going right for the junior forward tonight. Jada Jones going in. And again, there's the difference between Washburn and Central. Fortunately, Washburn will not have to worry about Central in the state tournament. But you see the issue Washburn has in the post. Chase Coley, really their only option, and she's more of a wing than a center. St. Paul Central has Chapman, has Chereau. They have a little more to go with. They may not have the best players. They certainly have some athleticism. And a nice dish from McDonald to Chapman. And this one's over. St. Paul Central will improve their winning streak to 14 games. Washburn's record against 4A teams will fall to 4-7. But fortunately, this is their last game against a 4A team. Beyond this, every team from this point will be in their class. Who they face, we don't know. It will depend on that first round matchup. Audrey Devon scored the last basket for Washburn. That brings her up to six. Williams. That will stay with Central. And I think Central's experience, you look at the schedule, Central, they know how to win these close games, something they weren't able to do in the last couple of years. That should come with time for Washburn. And a timeout is called by the Washburn Millers. A little more on these All-State nominees. Downing is considering University of Minnesota Duluth does not plan on playing athletically. Megan Lucas is still deciding but wants to continue with soccer. And going into the keys of the game, avoiding silly turnovers, uh, Washburn Unfortunately, ignored that, not because they wanted to, it just didn't work out that way. But it's fitting, I spoke with him earlier today, he said the girls have done the work, they've gone through a lot of beatings, including tonight, and if you don't go through those beatings, you will not be prepared for the playoffs. Minnehaha benefits from having some tough caliber opponents in their conference, the Tri-Metro, Washburn and Central, and overall, the Minneapolis and St. Paul conferences have been fairly one team rep leagues for the most part. Central having some decent competition in Como Park, Washburn with Roosevelt, but none with the caliber of some other conferences. But 
still for Washburn, a nice honor to be part of a venue they haven't participated in in 28 years. Sinead Chapman. Nice recognition, saw Coley leaping and waited for her to land so Chapman could jump up. Just like Wii Basketball on Wii Sports Resort. Renikoff, no, Chapman with another board. Chapman up to 16 points and a, another methodical win for St. Paul Central. They will improve their winning streak to 14 games. And such a dominating win over Washburn may give them enough of an edge if they get to state. Again, potential seating implications on the line. The coaches will see the teams. Chapman again, getting a little magic on her side. Had a four points in the first half. Three pointer for Holdall. Holdall, the only player in any kind of rhythm, but Washburn not able to really give her the ball too much. They tried to go through Coley. It just didn't work out. But Chapman, 13 points this half, or 14. I forget what the exact number is, but strong for her. Betsy McDonald adds two more. The senior leadership evident on this team. Washburn losing a lot of seniors as well, but they're going to have a strong anchor next season in Chase Coley, no matter what the result is. Blocking Palace Call with 54 seconds. But it's clear St. Paul Central made the adjustments. Got past that hump. It was an ugly performance in the first half. And you could say the instigator was the absence of Audrey Devon, who had significant foul trouble throughout. A conglomerate of issues affecting the Washburn Millers. But they'll have a chance to review this. And again, they get a week off to rest their bodies. And because they're going to be likely the number one seed in their section, this game will have no effect on that mark. They'll get some rest and they will watch Lyric Williams beat everybody and score a fast break bucket to get on the board in the second half. She's up to six points. Oldall drives and scores. Indi individually speaking, a solid effort. 18 points, but again, they contain Chase Coley and Washburn call another timeout there. 68-46. Let's take a closer look at Washburn section. We told you the section 4A bracket, and again, we don't have the seedings with me, but they should be posted by now. Washburn has a significant advantage over Minnehaha Academy, the only team to go undefeated in section play. The two schools did not play each other. Washburn defeated Humboldt. They took down St. Croix Lutheran. Those are some of the teams. Edison and Henry, of course, conference opponents. They took care of them with ease. And in their section, Washburn with the highest powered offense. Again, you're going to have to get through Minnehaha. It looks like I'm not sure Humboldt has the depth or the talent to go deep. But you want to win. If you want to win and go to state, Minnehaha may be your toughest path. But again, they got to get through their second round. They do get that first round by. There's another long court pass. Washburn playing. Up tempo here, and McDonald will shoot another pair with 33 seconds. Betsy McDonald, Willie Taylor said, one of the best point guards he has ever had in his coaching tenure.
And the second half for both McDonald and Chapman should demonstrate why. Only fitting that they match up with 18 points apiece. McDonald will take a seat. Her work is done. You see Washburn playing a little strategically here because they know this is their last chance to practice. Hold on, that was off the mark. It didn't look that well. And Brennikoff with the offensive rebound. Used up the dribble, can't find an outlet there. Tried to find Coley and Williams with her kids with the steal. And she's fouled and wincing as she tumbles on the hardwood with 18 seconds. Another streak that will end for St. Paul Central since we're on that note. They lost the last three appearances in the Twin Cities Championship. Again, all were to South. But a regular participant in this event. It's usually surprising to not see them play, and that's happened a couple of times. Humboldt got there in 2010. Highland Park last year, again, because of a tiebreaker rule. But when you have a Hall of Fame coach leading the way, you, you're never down for long. Washburn will regroup. They have a lot to look forward to. Again, they have a chance to shake up the status quo over in Class 2A. It's still a tough prospect to see Washburn or even Minnehaha win state. You've got New Richland, a strong team. Williams for three. No, but St. Paul Central has done more than enough. Audrey Devon will score the last basket before the buzzer. That will bring her up to 10. She ends with double digits, but St. Paul Central ends the night with a 71 to 48 win in the final regular season game. We now begin playoff competition for both teams. St. Paul Central takes the floor Wednesday to face North St. Paul. Minneapolis Washburn will await their opponent on Saturday. And in the words of Bain, let the games begin. <laughs> we'll try to get a word with the pair of St. Paul Central seniors who were influential in tonight's win. Stick around, you're watching high school girls basketball, St. Paul Central, your 2013 Twin Cities champion. Mike beat in here with Shade Chapman next to me and to her left is Betsy McDonald. And I guess fitting that both of you got 18 points tonight and both of you putting in equal numbers in the second half. That was perhaps the ugliest first half I've seen all season. How did you get past that hump? Um, we just had to play defense like we usually do and just make something with the turnovers they were giving us. And Betsy, what was your perspective? Yeah, we had to um, control the boards more and create more on offense and fast break. And then you, I, once you started draining r runners and three-pointers, I was a little worried we weren't going to see that all night. The rims were just very unforgiving tonight. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we weren't making our <laughs> shots. I think we were going too fast. Yeah, we were rushing. Does the prestige of this matchup in you know, not having won this in the last few years, do you think that created some nerves early on? Yeah, and the last time we won the city conference is the last time they went to state, so... Yeah, and I, I think we had a good crowd, and we just had to get used to playing in front of a lot of people, especially if we want to get to state and play on the big stage. 
Well, if you do get to state, uh, you might want to look at some tapes from those state tournament championship years because they had big crowds then. So uh, if you need a little prep work, maybe try to simulate that. But uh, I know you won a couple of years ago, but you haven't been to state since you won last won in 08, long before you two joined the squad. So I know you've got to get through three section gains first, but what would it mean to get uh, Central back there and uh, continue the illustrious career of your head coach? It would mean a lot, I think, for Coach Taylor and for us since we're seniors and we've never gone. Well, I went before, but we've all have never gone as a team. Yeah, it would mean everything to me. I, I've been watching the state tournament on TV since I was little and watching the old Central teams, and it would just mean the world to me to get there and be able to play there like with, the, with, the, with my team. And now, are you, you went to North, if I recall, right? That, yes. So you went as an eighth grader. And now, if you were to get there, would you uh, play in the band too? Or? Would I what? Play, play in the band too? No, I don't think so, but shout out to the band. <laughs> well, you'll get your chance come graduation time. I'm sure you'll get to serenade yourself and that's it. <laughs> yeah. And then on the game itself, uh, two big elements that influenced the game in your favor. One was Audrey Devon's foul trouble, and second, you found a way to shut down Chase Coley, double teaming her every time she got the ball, making life difficult down low. Um, she's, I think, yeah, we had to work hard because she was a good player and I was in foul trouble too, so I just had to learn how to guard her without fouling. Yeah, definitely. We would double team her wherever she, whenever we could, and just try to stop her. But she's a really good player. Now, last regular season game of the year. After this, uh, your future's uncertain as to how long you'll play. What do you two have to say to each other, and what do you have to say about the rest of the team? Uh, maybe something to Raina Chirot, who's right behind you. Other way. <laughs> and now she's going away. I think I scared her off. I keep falling. Um, oh, um, I don't know. I'm just excited to go, and I hope we work hard and win. Yeah, I'm going to miss everybody. We've become like a family, and yeah, I'm going to miss everybody for sure. Anything you'd like to say to each other or your teammates? Uh, I know we give the chance to say hi, but uh, we'll let you take the floor. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I love you guys. <laughs> yeah, same here. Well, there'll be a lot of giggles, I'm sure, at, at the uh, senior graduation and whenever this season ends. Uh, it seems like a lot of laughs have defined this season. And overall, I think, did that help you get through things? Yeah, we're a very goofy team, but when it's time to be serious, we can be serious. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, congratulations on giving St. Paul Central its first Twin Cities championship since 2007. Hopefully you can annex that and add a state tournament appearance to it, but a well-played game. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Today, Chapman and Betsy McDonald, that wraps up our coverage from here. St. Paul Central, your 2013 Twin Cities champions. Thank you for watching our coverage of high school basketball, girls basketball this season. I'm Mike Peden. We'll see you next year.